Hey guys, welcome to another Trade Genius Podcast. I got my good friend Bob here, and we are going to discuss the real recession indicator. We're going to show you what it's telling us and what to expect. Well, let's dive in. Trade Genius. All right, Bob, so never mind the government numbers. I think we got a real good read on the actual state of the economy here. Yeah, hey, before we get started, you want to hear really interesting trivia? So in 2007, on the same day, September, whatever, it was 27th or 20th, whatever it was, they, they lowered interest rates by 50 basis points. And October 9th, the market hit all-time highs, and that was the top. Today, we hit all-time highs on October 9th after a 50 basis point reduction on the same day of the month of September as of 2007. Somebody wrote on Twitter, we're not in real world, we're living in a simulation wouldn't that be wild if that was if today was the top yeah but uh i thought people would find that interesting you know i'm not describing anything to it other than like freaky but this is even more freaky throw this chart up phil this is really sad actually people don't understand that 86 percent of all employees are employed by small businesses. And I don't think they're in a happy mood right now, Phil. It is absolutely collapsing. You know, I think people are, you know, I think people get confused because they see certain pockets of the, the country doing well and, and certain groups of people doing well. But the overall trend is people's revenues are down. Companies' revenues are down. And the scary thing about small businesses is that they have what's called irreducible complexity problems or irreduce, irreducible staffing problems. So, you know, for them to go to like to four employees to three employees, it may shut their business down. And you're not going to go to somebody and say, hey, I know I've been paying you, you know, $30 an hour forever. And now I can only pay you $10 an hour. You know, I'm making it up. People will just be like, you know, you work with these people closely. And so what happens is they eventually get to the point where they just have to shut the whole thing down. And I think that's where we're at that point now, Phil. There's no enthusiasm. You know, there's there, the government is, is operating completely autonomously from the their constituents, the economy is 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 struggling. And that's the other thing too with small businesses. You know, and I'm I could speak I know where I'm speaking from. I own small businesses. Is is that costs are increasing higher than the revenue can be absorbed. You you can't raise the prices on your customers. They either won't absorb it or can't absorb it. And and you end up really alienating people. So they're in a no-win situation, Phil. What do you think? Oh yeah, I totally you know, this to me is the the real barometer of what's going on. Small business, right? If your if your GDP is going to be expanding, small business should be just cranking right along. But here we are about halfway down the drop that we saw back in 2020 when everything shut down. So you have to keep in mind, we're in negative readings. When everything was totally shut down, we had a negative 30. We're at a negative 17. Everything's open. Uh, Houston, we have a problem, right? So never mind the government numbers. What's going to end up happening is we're going to get a revision on the GDP probably in Q1. And then, you know, you're going to realize that the market top is in, right? I, I think that's how this is going to play out. Because if you look at like how unemployment or the jobs numbers, there's been massive downward revisions, right? So the market has these knee jerk reactions to the initial numbers, which are positive, market goes up, and then we then they slip in like the negative revisions. And for some reason, the market doesn't freak out about that as much, right? It's those initial prints. I just think that's kind of the game. It's kind of the way the casino works. But ultimately, I think this is basically telling you that, you know, the, the recession is underway. It's just a matter now of when they finally, when, when the, what is it, the, the government agencies that are in charge of letting us know that we are in a recession territory actually put their stamp on it. But, and I, you've been saying that for a while, right? The, the smaller businesses, the smaller economy, uh, the, the, you feel like they've been in a recession. I, wasn't it not this last Easter, but the previous Easter, you said you noticed it went, it just started to drop off? It was it was this Easter, this past Easter, you know, and it coincided with the uh, the tax deadline. It everything just shut off completely, and then we had a we had a second phase of that earlier this summer too. It's like it's, it was really weird. It, it, you know, you think things would do this, but that's not what's happening. People are are getting binary about things like I don't have money. You know what I mean? And I can't spend it. And things get are, are gonna are gonna get, I think, even even more dramatic as people start losing their jobs. Remember, the minute you lose your job, the first thing you look at is what do I have to cut out of my life in order to survive? And and I think we're gonna see more and more of that because the, the war notices are grinding away and you don't see any of the war notices for small businesses. You know, if a five man company, you know, cuts hours thirty percent on their employees, right? Well, they didn't change the unemployment rate, but it changed how much money 
money they make. And I think we're going to see more and more and more of that. And look, we showed you yesterday, the, the liquidity is not quite there. And so they're going to have to generate, I think, Phil, there's going to be some sort of gen- a liquidity generating event to allow people like BlackRock and the big hedge funds to be able to lift the market for them to get better positioned for the recession. And then I think whatever liftoff we get, and I'm still skeptical of it, whatever liftoff we get, I mean, a blow off, not this grind that we're having, it'll come right back down as an Eiffel Tower. And then I think things will start getting ugly. So, but in the meantime, you know, the market is just on this grind. Israel thing is still out there for people. Really weird comments today too. So basically Netanyahu and Gallant basically said to Iran, we're going to hit you in such a way it's going to be deadly and you're not even going to know how or why it happened. I mean, what is that? You know, and so and then you got the Biden administration talking about, well, they're going to hit the uh, oil facilities. Well, that has profound impact on the world economy because 95 percent of all oil shipments China receives is from Iran. And I don't know if the Chinese would sit idly by in that environment or they can't maybe do anything about it, but that affects our trade because that's going to affect what's going to be coming into our country. And, you know, the supply chains get, I mean, I could just see this thing daisy chaining and reverbing around the world. Not just saying that things shouldn't happen. I'm just saying that when they do happen, I think it's just going to be the start of a chain, not the end. And look at it, we have two hurricanes coming in too. Those eventually get our, our productive fill. But in the meantime, you're, you're looking at a good chunk, 16, 17% of the population in the United States is in hunker down mode here yep. for a couple of weeks. Yep. And so that suppresses activity too. So I think there's a lot more things to start getting worried about. And some people just won't recover, just like COVID. How many businesses just said, screw it, I'm done. Even though they got money thrown at them, right. they just said, I just can't recover from this. And I think we're going to see a lot of that. Yeah, I think it's going to be another round two of that because it's an extremely difficult environment, right? Because it's a, you know, I think we're, we're in stagflation, whether they admit it or not, because the, and you can see it like, especially in like things like rest, smaller restaurants, not the big chains, but smaller mom and pop uh, restaurants where, you know, they're struggling. They can't get people to come to work. Input costs aren't dropping yet. They will, but they're not dropping yet. And so like even here, um, you know, uh, in Hawaii, things like going in for lunch, the cost of what lunch is now is astronomically high compared to what it was pre-COVID. And it's not like they want to be raising prices like this. It's just that the input costs are high. So you can see where people are shying away from eating at these establishments. And they're just long-term establishments. I'm talking been around since like the 60s, right? Places like Honolulu and things like that that are closing up shop, you know? And so you, know, you got to think they've made it through the 80s, the post-Japanese bubble, which hit Hawaii hard because Hawaii is really tied to what happens in Japan because so much tourism comes from there. You know, they made it through the dot-com bubble bust. They made it through the great financial crisis. And now all of a sudden we don't have a, a recession. We don't have a crisis or anything like that. And these guys can't make it. So I think, you know, that ties back into this small business optimism index. And I, you know, the real story here is that it's, I think for most, it's been a slow transition into recession, right? And then and we're, we'll finally get that stamp by the government. But probably post-election, you know, can't have that prior to the election. No, and we, and we talked about that before. I mean, you know, most of small businesses really provide services. And, and a lot of those services are what I call nice to have versus have to have. I mean, you need a plumber. You probably don't need to get your, your nails done or you need to go to the golf course. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, I think those are the kind of decisions that are going to be made, Phil. But, yeah. but anyway, we I think we beat this dead horse. Uh, tomorrow, unless something Something else pops up, Phil. Let's show people what the great rotation looks like. Yep. Because it's bad news, good news. It's bad news if you're on the receiving end of it. It's good news if you're gonna take advantage of it. Yep. And I'd rather be taking advantage of it than being a victim of it. So come check us out, come trade with us. We're doing well. We think we got a good pulse on the day-to-day action and our algorithms don't care about Phil and our opinion. They just tell us when to buy and sell. With that, thanks a lot, Phil. Catch you later. Trade genius.